Hey guys, so glad you could join us today here on Scaly Adventures behind the scenes. And I have a really unique opportunity. Some of you may know I've worked in the medical field for years. So it's always neat for me to get a chance to talk to somebody who's in any type of medical field, particularly animal science. And the reason for that is you may not know this, but in the United States alone, there are over 130 medical schools all over the country that are accredited. But there's only 28 in the entire United States that you can go to. So your chances of becoming a human doctor are actually much higher than they are for becoming a veterinarian. So what does that mean to you? It means that you got to really study hard, you got to work hard, you got to do the extra courses, and you got to be competitive. But today I have a really unique opportunity. I'm at the University of Tennessee's Veterinary Medical College, and the really neat thing about it is I'm joined today by Dr. Adair and our special friend here, Camilla. And we're going to tell you a little bit, not only about the facility we're at, but how you can become a Dr. Adair, because I know some of you out there love horses, love animals, and want to know what it takes to become a veterinarian. And it's a lot of work, but Dr. Adair is going to paint you a picture on how to get there. So thank you for joining me today, Dr. Adair. Thank you for having me. It's a privilege to have you today. Sure. Now, you, you're a, a doctor of veterinary medicine, a right. DVM, but you're much, much more than that. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, what uh, I have gone after vet school, uh, which is a, a veterinary degree, and I can go out and practice. After that, I decided I wanted to do a little bit more, a little bit higher level of work, and so consequently I went and uh, did a res, uh, actually a two-year practice, mm -hmm. and then did a residency in surgery. Wow. And after that I became board certified in surgery, so uh, it, which is a, a very specialized area of veterinary medicine. Uh, of equine surgeons out mm -hmm. there, there's only a few hundred, hundred of us worldwide. Amazing. And so it's uh, it's a fairly uh, intense field and a very specialized field uh, in that. So it's kind of like when you guys are watching, like, like I was saying on our live episode footage, if anybody's ever broken their arm, they went to, maybe they went to see the emergency room, but then they went and saw an orthopedist. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then from that, if the break was a certain type, they might have gone to a hand surgeon right. or a specific. And so that's, that's kind of like what Dr. Adair is. He's a doctor within a doctor within a doctor, <laughs> if you will. And so what they do is very, very highly specialized. Specialized. And like he was saying, when you graduate veterinary college, you're qualified mm -hmm. it's, once you take your, your boards to become like a general vet. Right. Cats, dogs. Right. You can. We teach uh, in, in vet school. You go through all species and you'll learn about all species. And once you graduate, you are actually a doctor of veterinary medicine. And at that point in time, that qualifies you because you because you have been trained in the basic surgery, medicine, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You can actually go and do private practice and set up your own practice or go work for another veterinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do also have the option to continue your education mm -hmm. after graduation. It's a very similar type of, of situation with human doctors, mm -hmm. is that once they graduate, they can go out and do additional. Subspecializing. Subspecializing. The other thing to realize about veterinary medicine mm -hmm. is that it really, uh, just the DVM degree itself, you can do a lot with. You right. don't have to do private practice. You can go into a teaching situation such as what I do mm -hmm. uh, and teach. Uh, you can go with, in with the uh, uh, armed forces yep. and work with them. You can do public health. And remember, uh, veterinarians tend to be on the front line of any type of biomedical crisis in that a lot of the diseases uh, that are out there, terrorist type of, mm -hmm. of diseases, may show up in animals first. Like anthrax. Uh, like anthrax. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of different things that will show up in the animals first. So you can actually specialize in that public health and, and uh, the forefront on, on biological diseases. Uh, I so think one of the lot. things you brought up is, when, I know when I was in the Army, we had people that were uh, veterinarians that were actually mm -hmm. assigned to my unit that they were trained in everything from meat inspection mm -hmm. all the way to, like you said, taking care of the Army's show horses that we use in funeral processions and things but of that, that nature. But even the dogs, think of the dogs the that canines. go out and the canines that sniff for bombs out in the field mm -hmm. and uh, also in airports and sniffing for drugs and stuff like that. So 
veterinarians are very involved with those also. It's interesting when you drill down in any career field, whether it's a doctor, even a lawyer. Lawyers, some of them do family law, some of them do uh, criminal court mm -hmm. law. Um, it, it, to see how specialized careers can get if you're willing to put in the time. So, all right, Dr. Adair, tell me this. I'm 17 years old, I'm sitting at home and I say, I love horses or dogs and cats. I want to be a vet. Mm -hmm. And like I said at the very onset, there's over 130 medical schools across the country, but there's sure. only 28 vet schools. So I think that they were telling me here, the average you guys get around 800 to 1,000 applications mm -hmm. for about 80 seats a sure. class. Sure. So I'm 17 years old and I want to be a vet. Right. What do I need to do to compete? What you need to do first is, uh, Find a good college mm -hmm. to go to for your undergraduates because most most curriculum or most most vet schools that all first vet four schools years. require well at least two years. Okay, uh, and because they have actually set requirements that you have to have. Those requirements can actually be completed in two to three years. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to find out at the school that you're at what the pre-vet requirements are and what the vet school that you're interested in is, is requires for admission. Then after that is good grades. So you, basically, just so I can understand this, like I'm interested in going to the UT sure, vet school. Sure. So I should get on the phone even before I start college in my high school year and say, I want to go with you guys. Mm -hmm. What do I need to take? Biology? Exactly. There are set courses and even uh, that you can call the vet school up and ask them what their admission requirements are. Mm -hmm. But there's usually on the undergraduate campus a pre-vet advisor. Wow. And so what you would do is you would get in touch with that individual mm -hmm. and they will go through and you would say, okay, I'm interested in going to such and such a school. They can then get you the requirements and you can tailor your coursework in right. college to meet that. It is very heavy in the science, mm -hmm. so math and science is certainly uh, uh, a very important aspect. So while you're in high school, you need to concentrate on a lot of those areas too, because that's going to help you in your undergraduate work. So see guys, it's not just loving animals, that's only the very beginning of it. It's then the commitment of actually plotting out a course of where you want to go. And, and yeah. I know from a lot of cases that kids maybe can't go to the UT for their undergrad, so right. maybe you go to a Kennesaw State University oh, like where yeah. I went, oh, but yeah. you would still choreograph with the school. Exactly. As long as you meet the requirements uh, of the vet school that you're interested in, uh, that's all it takes. You can do that anywhere yeah. at any college. It doesn't have to be just at the school where the vet school is. The other important aspect, which oftentimes we don't address, mm -hmm. is it is important to get experience okay. with a veterinarian. Before you actually even start your undergrad. Then. Well, either before you start your undergraduate or when you're doing your undergraduate, because when you go to be admitted to vet school, they're going to want to know about your experience. Have you worked for a veterinarian? Have you... Have you uh, 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 been with a large animal vet? Have you been with a small animal vet? What's your experience? Because it is important that you have the knowledge of what the field of veterinary medicine is about. You know, I think you make a really great point, doctor. I've met people nursing and even a doctor, um, you know, in human medicine who said, you know, if I really knew what this was, I don't know if I would have gone the direction that I did. Exactly. And you don't want to waste the space no. in a medical school on somebody who well, doesn't it, it's that. It's not us wasting a space. Yeah. I mean, you spend four years, and vet school is not cheap, okay? So you do have to think of uh, the financial commitment that you have to make. And so if you spend four years and you find out that veterinary medicine is actually not what you want to do, yeah. then at that point in time, you've wasted four years and a lot of money. Several hundred thousand yeah. dollar mistake. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you do. It, that's why we always recommend that you get experience with a veterinarian so that you know what you're getting into. Well, I think that's great advice, doctor, and I think that you could even, yeah, you know, a great advice to that 17-year-old might be, hey, go to the local vet in town and volunteer. volunteer. Don't ask the man to pay you. Volunteer your time and show up with a notebook early asking questions. Exactly. 
Exactly. Wow. And especially if you've got your own animal, then just get with your veterinarian that takes care of your animals and just say, listen, can I come and volunteer with you on Saturday mornings? Yeah. You know, and you don't have to do it every day of the week or maybe it's after school. Maybe you want to come spend a couple hours. Yes, you're probably going to be cleaning tables and maybe cleaning out <laughs> stalls or cages. Yeah. But you're being exposed to what veterinary medicine is. And we all know that you got to start somewhere. you got to right start at the ground and work your way <laughs> That's up. That's right. Well, Dr. Adair Camillo, we want to thank you both for your time today. You're welcome. I know that there's some viewers out there who really, I, we talked to a lot of kids who say, I want to be vet. And I know just how hard it is sure. and what the commitment it takes to do what the, you guys do. So we thank you so much for taking the time thank to you. offer the next generation a chance. And we hope to see you. you here at the UT Vet School. So keep on studying, get good grades, work extra hours, and maybe you too can get a chance to work with Camilla. We'll see you at scalyadventures.com.